Hi everybody, my name is Chelsea and today we're going to be doing a story and meditation about effort. And our story is called The Three Ninja Pigs. And it begins like this. I think you're going to like this story. Once upon a dangerous time, a wolf loved to huff and to puff. He'd go around town and blow houses down till three little pigs cried, Enough! We have got to get rid of that bully. We're tired of letting him rule. We must put an end to this terrible trend. Let's train at that new ninja school. Pig one took beginner Aikido to learn a few basic techniques. He gained some new skills and got bored with the drills and dropped out in less than two weeks. His brother, Pig two, took jujitsu and learned how to block and to punch. When that wolf comes to knock, he'll be in for a shock. Kaya! I will eat him for lunch. The teacher said, excellent progress, but pig son, you must study more. Pig two said, no way, sayonara sensei. I'm ready to settle a score. Pig three chose the art of karate and rose bright and early to train. She got in a groove and mastered each move, the cartwheel, the crescent, the crane. She balanced and blocked like an expert and practiced her lessons nonstop. By the time she was through, she could break boards in two by performing a perfect pork chop. For months, she'd persisted in earnest until she had paid all her dues. How happy she felt when she earned her last belt. I'll make that wolf shake in his shoes. Soon after, the wolf paid a visit to the little straw house of Pig One. Stay out of my hut or I'll kick your, kid, kid, your, I'll kick your big butt. I'm telling you, you'd better run. The wolf took a giant step forward. Oh yeah, come and get me, he dared. Pig one made a fist. He swung, but he missed. I wish I'd been way more prepared. The wolf chased pig one to his brothers and hollered, hey pigs, let me in. Pig two yelled, retreat, or you'll suffer defeat by the hair of my chinny chin chin. One puff and the wolf blew the door down. Pig two did his best flying kick. But whoosh, the wolf dodged and the pig's foot got lodged. We've got to get out of here quick. The chase carried on to their sisters. Pig three was outside in her gi. I'm a certified weapon, so watch where you're stepping. You don't want to start up with me. Pig three faced the wolf and bowed deeply, for ninjas are very polite. Quit huffing and puffing, and I am not bluffing. I warn you, I'm ready to fight. She then gave a swift demonstration with backflips and butterfly kicks. The wolf looked quite shaken, but hollered, Yo, Bacon, I'm not at all scared of your tricks. Pig three heaped some bricks in a pile. I'll show you what else I can do. With one mighty whack, she split the whole stack. Pig three said, that could have been you. The wolf saw that he was outrivaled. He took one last look at pig three. I love to eat ham, but I think I should scram before she makes mincemeat of me.
The brother pigs high-fived their sister and watched the wolf vanish from view. They cheered, ninjas rule, let's go back to school so we can be ninja pigs too. They devoted themselves to their training till each proudly earned a degree. Three pigs full of mojo, they ran in their own dojo and life was forever wolf free. And that is the end of our story. And so here are some questions for you, for your, you and your family. And if it makes sense to do so, feel free to pause the video so that you can talk about the questions with your family after I read them. What effort level did Pig 1 make with learning Aikido? What happened to him when the wolf visited? What effort level did Pig 2 make with learning Jiu-Jitsu? And what happened to him when the wolf visited? What effort level did Pig 3 make to learn Karate? What exactly did she do to become good at karate? Did Pig 3 actually fight the wolf? How did she get him to leave? What did the other two pigs do after they saw their sister's accomplishment? And do you think that martial arts and other skills require a lot of practice and a lot of effort? How do you practice your skill sets? Is there anything that you practice at home? I remember I used to practice piano for a little while and then I stopped practicing. I didn't feel like I was very good at it. But with dance class, I practiced and practiced and practiced and had even eight dance classes a week at some point and I got really, really good for a while. All right, now here is our meditation for today. Our meditation is called the happiness factory. So let's get settled. Find a seat or lay down, whatever is comfortable for you. And we're going to listen to our bell. And then when the sound gets quiet, we'll begin. You ready? Close your eyes and imagine floating to a special, calm place. A place where you love to be, floating and gliding as you let your body and mind just rest and become very, very peaceful. Now imagine entering a lovely garden full of sweet smelling roses and lilies. Their wonderful scent mesmerizes you. You walk past the flowers, touching them lightly to feel their soft, fragrant petals. And suddenly you see a delightful looking building in the distance. There seems to be no one near or inside the building. You touch the doorknob and the door just opens for you. You see all sorts of controls are located and guess what the sign on the wall says? You've come to the happiness production factory. Is it really possible to create happiness? You look around and find a main switch. You decide to flip it on. You hear a clutter of machines rolling into action. You can view the whole machinery and assembly line through a large glass window. A large jar starts its journey on a belt. A machine drops down to add something. You try to peek inside and see it is adding generosity to the jar. Another machine adds sharing and yet another adds love and then goodness. All of these qualities are mixed together with a giant whisk. And now the jar is shifted to another belt. It moves to a compartment where it is steamed with kindness. And when it comes out of the compartment, it is cooled down with lots of smiles. Patience and helpfulness are sprinkled on top. 
you see that happiness can be created, not by things outside of us or stuff we buy in a store. Rather, happiness is created when we do and say nice things, when we are helpful and generous. Happiness is created when we share with others and love each other. This has been such a beautiful sight to see today. Now you know the secret to manufacturing happiness. You keep this knowledge in your heart and you also share it every chance you get. Sharing what you have learned also makes happiness grow. Now you rest easily as you walk back outside and sit down in a nice comfy chair in the garden. There is a lot of happiness all around here and inside of you too. Anytime you feel a little sad or scared, you can remember to open your own jar of happiness. You'll start to feel all the warm and good feelings that are just waiting for you to share. So open your eyes now when you're ready. Take in a nice deep breath. And stretch your body. We'll listen to our bell one more time. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a great week. I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.